In this video, we will focus on language use and the idea that part of the meaning of an utterance is its intended social function. It seems clear that learning to communicate in a language involves more than acquiring the pronunciation and grammar. We need to learn how to ask questions, make suggestions, greet, and thank other speakers. In other words we need to learn the uses to which utterances are conventionally put in the new language community and how these uses are signaled. Similarly, as hearers, part of understanding the meaning of an utterance is knowing whether we have been asked a question, invited to do something, and so on. In a terminology introduced by J. L. Austin, such functions of language are called speech acts. There are two important characteristics of speech acts, interactivity and context dependence. The first is a crucial feature, communicating functions involves the speaker in a coordinated activity with other language users. For some uses of language, this interactivity is more explicit than others. There are two aspects of context dependence. The first is that many speech acts rely on social conventions to support them. The speech act is supported by institutional facts. Examples commonly used in the literature include a judge saying, I sentence you to hang by the neck until dead, a priest in the marriage ceremony saying, I now pronounce you man and wife, or a country's president. Announcing, I declare a state of national emergency. These speech acts of sentencing prisoners, pronouncing a couple married, and so on can only be performed by the relevant people in the right situations, where both are sanctioned by social laws and conventions. The local context of a speech act. An utterance may signal one speech act in one situation and another elsewhere. If the asker already knows the answer then an utterance with the form of a question can be, for example, a request, as if I see you are wearing a watch and I say, can you tell me the time? Austin claimed of these sentences that they were in themselves a kind of action. This kind of utterance he called performative utterances. In these examples they perform the action named by the first verb in the sentence. Austin proposed that communicating a speech act consists of three elements, the speaker says something, the speaker signals an associated speech act, and the speech act causes an effect on her listeners or the participants. The first element he called the locutionary act, by which he meant the act of saying something that makes sense in a language, that is, follows the rules of pronunciation and grammar. The second, the action intended by the speaker, he termed the illocutionary act. The third element called the perlocutionary act, is concerned with what follows an utterance, the effect of an illocutionary act. Of speech act possible in languages. Searle, proposed that all acts fall into five main types. First, is representatives, which commit the speaker to the truth of the expressed proposition. Second, directives, which are attempts by the speaker to get the addressee to do something. Third, commissives, which commit the speaker to some future course of action. Fourth, expressives which express a psychological state, and the last is declarations, which affect immediate changes in the institutional state of affairs and which tend to rely on elaborate extralinguistic institutions.